Now, the reason the council has not been on the same page is because I think uh, as long as the council is in a position to address a recommendation to both sides in a conflict, I think you could get agreement. But if the council wants to address its recommendation to one side, that is the government, and is not willing to encourage the opposition to come to the negotiating table, then you've got a council recommendation which clearly is not acceptable to some members. What we need to do on Syria clearly is to realize that the situation there is spiraling out of control, that Syria is a sui generis case, that unraveling of the situation in Syria will have very serious consequences for the other countries in the region, uh, that unlike Libya, uh, uh, the consequences will be far higher. I'm not suggesting that uh, what happened in Libya is not serious enough. If the proposition were to be advanced that somebody should uh, hand over power, um, in other words, a um, regime change uh, proposition, I think some members of the council, including my own uh, delegation, would have a lot of difficulty with that. Therefore, I'd like to see how that is couched. If, for instance, the call is for political dialogue between the um, uh, government and the opposition, that's something we could support. If the demand is for, um, uh, you know, abjuring violence, uh, reform and negotiations, we can support that. If as a result of those negotiations, there's a political formula which is um, arrived at, which results in uh, uh, power sharing or uh, this thing, that's an entirely different matter. But this is something for the people of Syria to determine. I mean, as a matter of principle, I have a lot of difficulty with people uh, advocating uh, the reordering of societies, as my prime minister put it in his statement to the uh, uh, General Assembly uh, in September, the reordering of societies from outside using military force. Now, that's something I have serious objection to. But as I said, when the resolution comes, we'll take a good look at it and see what it um, what it says. Well, I was quite, we were quite comfortable with the Russian uh, uh, draft resolution. We thought it was a good basis for um, uh, seeking consensus in the council. But I think some of our friends uh, uh, from the Western countries uh, had some difficulties with it because it did not contain the coercive or punitive measures that they were seeking. So that's why you think the Western countries I think that's have proposed... Reason. But as far as I know, Marina, I think the Russian resolution is still around. It's not been put on the, it's not been put in blue but it's still very much uh, on the table. In the long run, these things don't work. I mean, let's look at the issue of radicalization. I mean, we all know what happens when military operations take place. You end up producing a more radicalized response to it. I think Afghanistan is a case in point. Iraq is a case in point. And um, I'm not a soothsayer, but I'm a student of um, history and international relations. I would be surprised if um, the Libyan experience does not result in a more radicalized um, uh, response uh, from within Libya. As it is, uh, Al-Qaeda used to uh, recruit from Libya. And there are all kinds of studies now which the intelligence community, which the um, uh, you know, strategic community uh, and the think tanks are now 